sorry I'm late, Mr. Halfpenny. The bus skidded on black ice and hit a cow and we all had to give it artificial respiration. What, the bus? No, the cow. Good heavens, is it all right? Oh, yes, just a few dents in the horn. What, the cow? No, the bus. Look, Miss Ugly. Hmm? I finally managed to get the vase together. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Halfpenny. <gasps> and I couldn't find me bucket and mop. I didn't know you took your work home with you, Mrs. Ford. I'd left it in the rectory after choir practice. I had to go all the way back, you know, get on a bus all on me. I don't like doing that. Young Good mate. heavens, I'm so sorry I'm late. Have we started? Oh, yes. You're not employed here, Professor. You don't have to be on time. I do, I do, I, I do, I do. Always on time. Oh, yes, I see. Now, ah, Miss Carter. Just half an hour. I'm so sorry I'm late. It doesn't matter. It does matter. It's Teddy's fault, you know. He overslept. Right through his alarm. Miss Cartridge, it doesn't matter. Oh, dear, dear, dear. It was ugly. I shook him, I poured water over him, I shouted at him, I'm so fed up with <coughs> him. <coughs> yes, Mr. Halfpenny. We'll start with the teddy bear today. Halfpenny, I'm sorry, but. Uh, late, but your wife's sister's donkey stubbed its nose on a milk float this morning and you had to take it to the vets. And of course, that meant you didn't get any of your oats. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I was about to say I'm sorry, but you'll have to move that blackboard from up there. Look, I'll do it after the first story. Can we get on, please, Miss Ogley? In Gingen and... A... Is this a museum of inventions? It is. Oh, oh. come on, I want to show you the ducks. <laughs> Mr Halfpenny, who is that person? Mm. I want to know about the cross. Uh, you'll have to go and see Mr Halfpenny. Oh, come on, I want to show you the ducks. Ducks. Isn't that the, uh, lady who was with PC Bonner last week? No, oh, yes, Miss Rush. Mr. Halfpenny? Uh, oh, yes. Um, I want to know about that. Uh, and I want to know about ducks. Well, I'm sorry, you'll have to wait a moment. We're doing the teddy bear. Oh, no. Miss Ogley. <clears throat> it all started in 1880 in Gingen am der Brenz, the town. Where? In der Schwabische Elbe. Where? The Black Forest. Oh, yes. Germany. For Germany! <laughs> Hello, I am Margaret Steiff. I am a dressmaker. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Fritz, hmm? see if this fits. Oh, thank you. I am confined to the wheelchair because I've had the polio since I was two years old, but I manage a fair living from the dressmaking. Oh, thank you. I am 33 years of age. It is 1880 already, and I am about to become very famous with my new idea, Jumbo. Bitte? That is please in German, bitte. Oh, this is my brother Jumbo, and this is the elephant toy Fritz. Nein! That is no in German. Nein. Oh, nein, nein. This is my brother Fritz, and this is the elephant toy Jumbo. He will sell very well as a soft, cuddly toy. I will be rich, and he will be... Bitte? Yes, I expect you will. Now I would like to tell you about my nephew, Richard. Uh, where is he, Fritz? Bitte? In the beer keller, drinking bitter. Nein. Drinking nine bitter, the lazy good for nothing art student. Nein, nein, nein. He is at the zoo. Oh, the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> ah, good day, Richard. Good day, oh. Aunt. I see the business is booming. All oh, the animals are selling very well. Children all over Germany are laughing at them. Oh, good. Ah, a cafe, Richard. Thank you, Uncle. Yeah. Bitter. Well, put some sugar in it then. Auntie, look at the drawings of the bears I have made. Oh. Oh, Richard, they are so sweet. I will make some toy bears immediately. <laughs> they are my favorite animal. Oh, uh, bears, eh? Now, should they be felt? Yes, of course they should be felt, Margaret. How can the kinder have a little cuddly bear without feeling them? <laughs> oh, nein, Fritz. I mean, should they be felt? Felt material. I think a bear should be more furry. Uh, say, ah, mohair stuffed with capoc. Oh, yes, that's so soft. It would make a very friendly bear. What do you think, Uncle Fritz? <coughs> what are you trying to say, Fritz? Oh, good idea, Uncle. Make the bear with movable limbs. And make it so it makes a growling noise. Good. Oh, it would be a fine pet, a friendly pet. <coughs> oh, oh. Excuse me, I... I have a piece of K-pop stuck down my throat. What will you call him, Auntie? <laughs> what do you think? Dear Bear? Pizza Fritzer. 
He's definitely a little boy. He'll definitely be a little boy's bear. A friend and a pet. Friend pets. Mm. Friend pets, good. Friend Fritz. Or simply Petsy Bear. Yeah. Oh, Petsy Bear, meet Richard Steiff. Petsy. <laughs> <laughs> pets, meet Fritz. <laughs> Oh, Margaret, it's very clever how you have sewn the arms and the legs onto the body. That will remain a trade secret forever, Fritz. <laughs> Not if I pull the arms off. <gasps> Fritz! Oh. Oh, Mr. President. I declare, I haven't had much luck at all today. I haven't seen one doggone bear all day, grizzly, black or brown. Yeah, me neither, Judge. Ah, uh, not a good bear hunt, this. Ah, oh, no insult intended. It's too darn big a party for a bear hunt. So, Mr. President, solves state boundary dispute with Louisiana in half a day. He comes on a bear hunt for three days. He's a better rough rider than a Republican. He's a fair game hunter, is our Teddy Roosevelt, Jake. He ain't bagged anything yet, Sal, and I'll be pleased to report it. And now we're barred from his camp by his favored guards. Mm, nothing happening yet. I do not like this Yankee fella coming down here, I tells you, Sal. Not giving us any interviews, not giving us any action. Well, he's got the best guide in the south of the Mississippi with old Hope Collier. Susie might get some it. I'm told he's fought Grizzly single-handed before. Mr. President, your guide has one. The dogs have run it in by the cops down there. Here you are, Mr. President. You're shot, sir. Go on, shoot him. Go on. Come on, Mr. President. Shoot the barman. Mr. President, shoot the little critter. Why? It's only a small bear. I can't shoot a defenseless bear. No game. Well, I never, Mr. Collier. And you went to all that trouble. Ah, Mr. President. So he refused to shoot the little varmint. <laughs> Anyways, I heard it wasn't a cub at all, but a full-grown bear that was wounded by the dogs. Well, he refused to shoot that fella. No sport, he says. No sport. So Mr. McDougal, he comes up and killed it for him. Oh, ah, uh, Mr. President! Up! Uh... No, I think I'll write my line about a little cub and him being a coward. It'd make a great cartoon for Berriman. Draw in the line. Thank you. <laughs> Say, hi. No, this Mrs. Hi. Milton. You see the Washington Evening Star of yesterday? <laughs> what I be reading Washington Evening Star for in Brooklyn, Herman? I read Russian newspapers, news from old country. No, this will interest you. Teddy Roosevelt's bear hunt. Theodore Roosevelt, his name Herman. Oh, Mishka, Mishka, he is great bear hunter, whether his name Teddy or Roosevelt or even Theodore. Oh, no, look, 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 look. He never caught sight of one at the bear hunt in Mississippi and actually refused to shoot the bear cup. that was bored to him. Aww. See, 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 the cartoon. Morisky, <laughs> look, the sweet little bear. Yeah, so a brave Teddy could not find courage to shoot little bear cub. Brave Teddy Roosevelt, eh? <laughs> Thought you like it. Uh, so you're not going to ask me how's business? How's business? Don't ask. Terrible. Bad position, can't get customers. Uh, I see you like bears yourself, Morris. Oh, oh, bears, bears, Herman. Always it's bears. That's it. Herman, Mishka. 
I have it! I simply love that toy bear in the window. Oh, yes, my husband made it. He likes bears. Oh, quite right. What with the President's Bear Cub story last week and mm. that great cartoon by Clifford Berriman. I just must have some. Sweets, candy, chocolate? Well, no, some of those bears. That oh. toy bear in the window. I'm oh. sorry, it's not for sale. Oh, madam, uh, all our bears are for sale. Oh. For order. <laughs> we call them uh, Teddy's Bears. <laughs> uh, I put your name down for order, yes? Oh, well, six. No, 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 ten. Uh, I have a dozen. Mrs. Nicholson's the name. Thank you. Mishka, the eighth customer. Twenty-three bears on order. But we didn't sell any candy. Oh, Mishka, Mishka, shut up shop. <laughs> okay. Oh, we must get tons more of this lovely brown plush. Mishka! Come in the back and start manufacturing. Ah, oh, Teddy's bears. I, I wonder if... Dear Mr. Mictum, I don't think my name is worth much to the toy bear business, but you're welcome to use it. Theodore Roosevelt. In brackets, Teddy. Maurice. Everyone will want our teddy bears. But more risky. Will it be as sweet a sight when a little girl mothers a teddy as when she mothered a doll? Oh, teddy bears for boys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and girls, eh? You have to make another 300 by Thursday. Me, Moriski? And what will you be doing? Watching you. For your children, the best is good enough. You can buy my products with confidence. It is my quality, and I will answer for it. I would like to buy one of your Carla Camels, please. Uh -huh. yeah. Here. Nobody seems to be interested in friend pets. Okay. Thank you, sir. It is here. It is the name which I tell you. Pets is not a real good name. Now, if we'd have called him Wolfgang or Helmut oh, or Adolf, even. Fool, well, five more minutes and the fair will be over. Yeah. I think our fairy friend was not a good idea. Do we have orders for 600 jumbos, 200 cows and camel, 300 Helmut the hippos, the name? See, excuse me, could I have a look at the teddy? The teddy? Yeah, yeah, teddy, 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 teddy bear. Oh! It's a bear, friend Pets. Herman Kaufman. Oh, pleased to meet you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> meet friend Pets. No, 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 this is Teddy Bear. Boy, oh boy, does he move good? How are his limbs secured? Ah, well, you... Well, that's a trade secret. What if you pull the his... The friend Pet, I mean, uh, the Teddy Bear. He is made from the best, softest mohair. He is a very good and safe and darling child's toy. I know. I will order 3,000. Yep, 3,000. You can deliver to the States in a week. 3,000? Uh, Herman Kaufman. Uh, uh, you will write me out a bill of sale now? For the discount for cash? Well, uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Oh, you keep that, please. Uh, Fritz, Richard, uh, go to the factory and order up. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Wiedersehen. <laughs> what factory, bitte? The teddy bear factory. In the next year, 1903, we sold 12,000 bears. And by 1907, 974,000 bears were sold. Oh, good, good. What we need... Is a terribly nice song about a teddy bear. <laughs> um, huh. If you go down to the woods today, ah. I say, I say, if Theodore is president of the United States with his clothes on, what is he with his clothes off? I don't know. What is a president with his clothes off? Teddy bear. <laughs> I was born. It's my mother's before that and her mother's before that. She's called Edwina, but my granny called her Gladly. Oh, why Gladly? Because she's cross-eyed and called after that well-known hymn, Gladly, my cross-eyed bear. Mm. Ah. Hmm. Rather 
were strange, weren't they, these early bears? Because they've, they've got long arms and yeah. hunchbacks. They weren't really very pretty. No, it wasn't until the uh, English teddy bear shape was introduced in 1907 that it changed. And that has been the most popular shape ever since. I didn't think you liked teddy bears, Mr Dunn. No, well, <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm interested in, uh, in good stories. <laughs> Aren't I, Fritz? <laughs> Fritz! Oh, no. could you tell me, do you know about the lacrosse stick? Uh, we've, uh, <clears throat> we've done the crossword. Excuse me. Well, I'm going to show Wilf my teddy bear. Excuse me, Dr Lunn. I've brought my teddy to visit you. Do you like him? No. Why not? Well, teddy bears encourage children to play with bears, so if they're out in the wild, it's very dangerous. So, what you want is a teddy bear like this, which is designed to put children Ooh. off playing with bears. Oh, oh I don't like that. Ooh. That's the idea. It works. Oh. But you like things furry, don't you? Yes, yeah, sometimes. What about this nice little furry pussycat here? Very rare object. Oh, isn't he lovely? Rare and obscure things are very difficult to find. Like, for example, this device, which is a very early candle snuffer. You pull the chain like so, and it goes. It's for people who are short of puff. How very useful. But of course, you see, these are all indoor activities. If you want to do something sure. outside, like mm -hmm. marathon running, what you need is this device, because so many people joining marathons nowadays. They don't all know when to start, so what they really need is my marathon starter. First of all, I like the... Oh, Oops. we'll climb off. No, don't go! Don't go! Don't go! Don't go! Don't go! No. I've forgotten my teddy. I have to go back. Oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. Are we doing the invention of the football today, Mr Harpenny? Well, not exactly, though it is to do with football. Oh, well, he hasn't given it anyway. He was miles away. The umpire couldn't see. Oh, Kate, what do you know about it? Ready? Play! This is ridiculous. It was definitely a goal. Oh. Yeah. Bentley. Uh, yes, Brody. Got an idea. Oh, you're always working out things. Watch the game. It's 2 1. It should be for us anyway. I wager you I could devise a system where there'd be no question of whether it was a goal or not. I could, yes, I could. I could solve all disputes of whether the ball had passed inside or outside the posts. Ah, never. How much? Pound? Done. Well, Mr. Brody, seems like a good idea to me. And as a director of Everton Football Club, I will help. And my boys at the Everton Industrial School will help to make your uh, net. Huh. Net seems to work, Mr. Brody. All right, I'm well pleased, Mr. Barkley. <laughs> well done, Smithers. Now, what do I want to be coming to Bolton for, John, on New Year's Day? I mean, the first day of 1890, and you drag me along here to watch Bolton Wanderers play Nottingham Forest. Look, Everton are at home at Anfield. Now, why bring me? Is this some harebrained scheme of yours, John? Read your programme sheet, Bentley. 
first experiment and test of Mr. J.A. Brody's football catching net will be tried today in this game. Have you applied for a patent yet? Last month. Let's hope someone scores. <laughs> between the posts. Ah, oh, oh, ah, yeah, well, hey, quite right, lad. Uh, goal score! Yeah. One nil to uh, Bolton Wanderers. Yeah. Oh, please, Mr Sutcliffe. Maybe Sutcliffe will be the first of many goalkeepers to pick the ball out the back of my net. No uh, dispute in that goal. Well done, John, I owe you oh. that. Game, set and match to John Alexander Brody, I'd say. Brody in his blinking birdcage? That shouldn't have been a goal. <laughs> that might be the mildest epithet you'll hear, old chap. <laughs> uh, the, the Football Association cannot possibly have any monetary interest in apparatus, Mr Brody. And therefore, we cannot accept your offer of patent rights. No matter. I'll hand the rights to the net manufacturers, Messrs Edwards of Bridport, after I've made good my out-of-pocket expenses. As you wish. <laughs> oh, by the way... You might be interested to know that the cup final this year at the Oval between West Bromwich Albion and Aston Villa will be the first to use your nets. Of course, since Mr Brodie's been made city engineer, he's relinquished all interest in his inventions. Your husband is a remarkable man, Mrs Brodie. Prefabricated houses, is it now, Brodie? Yes, reinforced concrete, Charles. He started the Traffic Association, the forerunner of the RAC in years to come. By Jove, talking of cars, that's a lovely little number you've got at the moment, Brodie. But why the registration K8? You've always had that registration number, haven't you? K8. K8? Kate? Oh, is your name Kate, Mrs. Brodie? Oh, no, my name's Amy. Why, well, I do believe our city's chief engineer is blushing. Oh, well, he hasn't given it anyway. He was miles away, the umpire couldn't see. Oh, Kate, what do you know about it? 2-1 to Brodie, I'd say. Um, he went on to become a very respected member of Liverpool society. Their chief engineer, in fact. I don't think he really knew anyone called Kate, though. Oh. Oh. Great goal I scored last night. Oh, Mr Hartley, I'm sorry, you can't yeah, put that blackboard no, there. No, Professor Medes was just... No, I don't um, care. It's in the way. Would you put it over there, please? Yeah. this bit right off. Oh, wait a minute. I've just had an idea. Oh. Do we know who invented the blackboard? Miss Ugly, do we have a card on the blackboard? Oh, wait a minute. Oh! <laughs> the inventor of the blackboard was James Pillins in 1814. James Pillins? Yes, rector of Edinburgh High School. Ah, oh, another Scottish inventor chappy, eh? And the inventor of coloured chalk. Oh. So today, class, we will study the map of Central Europe, Prussia, and the German Confederation. My goodness. You, boy, at the back, can you see? What can I see? This is absurd. I will gladly ask you all to move a little closer, but with 144 boys here, we really ought to have smaller classes. This is impossible. Anyway, let's look. Let's look at the recent battles against Napoleon, here at Leipzig and at Dresden. Please, Professor Pillins, where is Dresden on the map? It's here, on the River Elbe, just east of Leipzig. What river, sir? I cannot see a river. I cannot see Leipzig. It's here. Look, look, look. Can you not see the Hartz Mountains? Oh, I cannot see the mountains, sir. I cannot even see Prussia. I can't even see a map. <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie! Oh. You'll get a taste of the tours if oh, you don't... Sir, I was only joking, sir. Beechwood, Helen. I got them to plane it for me in the woodshop. Not too smooth. Mahogany and oak were too shiny. What on earth for, James? Are you making a fire screen? I don't think I want it black. It's so morbid. Uh, it's not a fire screen, Helen. It's for maps. I've never seen a black map. I paint it black first. Then I mark the maps on the surface with chalk. Just the features I want to show. Oh! Can I draw the maps on your black board, James? You are so kirk-handed and I am so good at art. Uh, when it's dry, Helen. Here we have a map, my own clear map of Central Europe. Here, the coast of Prussia. 
Denmark, Westphalia, the Hartz Mountains, the River Elbe, Leipzig. Excuse me, sir. Lindsay. Is that cross a town or a battle, sir? Where, here? And is that, that a river or a road, sir? I cannot tell the difference between the mountains and the sea, sir. They were still confused. Young Lindsay couldn't tell the difference between the towns and the battlefields. Mackay pointed out that Westphalia was misspelt. Oh, no, it isn't. I've changed it now. I rubbed out the F with my kerchief and changed it. That's the beauty of the bod. Oh, dear. What did you do about the boys' complaints, James? Thrashed them all. I will not tolerate insolence and insubordination. The Tors teaches just as much as words, Helen. Yes, James. But it is still confusing. Maybe... If we could use colours to differentiate between the roads and the rivers and the mountains uh, and the it, sea. Oh, it's a good idea. Go and get some food colouring from the kitchen. I'll, uh, I'll grind up chalk and add colour. Are you hungry, James? I brought you some porridge. Perfect. Just what I need. What are you doing, James? My best Scots oats. I need something to bind the chalk, Helen. Your porridge could just be the right binding agent. Oh. So here we have it. I have invented the blackboard and coloured chalk. Oh. Oh. Light green for the hills, blue for the rivers, pink for the towns, and red marks the battles here at Leipzig, Dresden, Bautzen, etc. Now, is anybody not able to see? Good. Excuse me, Professor Pellens. Patterson. What's that blue lump just north of Saxony, sir? Don't be stupid, Patterson. It's Lake... Oh, uh, no, uh, it's a lump of porridge. <laughs> <laughs> the toss is a sign of a teacher's incompetence. I'll laugh with them. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I made the colour chalk out of good Scots porridge. Now, Patterson, can you tell me what this is? Oh, wait, that's another lump of porridge here for old King George to bind up his bowels. <laughs> <laughs> Off with your knickerbockers, Patterson. Oh. I say, what's this? Oh, that's good. That must have taken hours. It did. Did you cook a piano? Yes. Are these all the inventors and inventions we've covered so far? Yes, yes. they are. Yes, gracious. Well, what are we doing next week? Anybody know? Well, we have a variety of things. Let's look in the book. Yes. I think it's Florence Nightingale. We're doing medicine and things like that. Florence Nightingale wiped the black Right. Well, they'd have. Hi, Sang. Hello. Hi, Major Squaddle.